Welcome everybody to Imagination TV and today we're with the youngsters as we look at the week of listening and we had a special episode this morning with Mark Carnegie and his friends as we gathered to, to reflect on the idea of universal basic income and think about what is the world going to look like after COVID-19 and into the future as we try and navigate a world with automation and with, with so, many, uh, yeah, so many different worlds to look at with the rise of, of so many different wonderful robots that are coming in to take over um, a lot of different jobs. What are the jobs of the future? Will we be working in the future? And this is a generation that's going to be inheriting this world and, and working out how to run it. So we're, we're pumped to gather with the youngsters on a Tuesday. I've got a co-host today who's joining me for the first time, co-hosting as a debut. Steph Beck, how are you? Hi, Jack. I'm doing good today. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, tell me about listening. I heard that you've been doing a bit of research with the AIM gang on, on listening. What did you learn? Yeah, um, I did a bit of the, the research on listening with a, a team of other um, staff members and um, I learned a lot actually. So there's a couple of different um, categories to listening, but I think the one that we work with most um, at AIM would have to be empathetic listening. This is where you want to try and be fully present to have a, a better understanding of what um, someone's talking about. Um, and funnily enough, it also highlighted to me some of the vices that I have um, in not actively listening um, and the, the negative impact that that can have on, on relationships. So um, in the spirit of always learning, I'm glad that I know this now and I'm really keen to, to see what the youngsters think about the, the theme. I was watching on Masterclass, which is this sort of... Uh focus development uh, online school uh, where they bring uh, you know, different experts in together. So Spike Lee's on there and talks about filmmaking and you know, there's a couple of writers who have done really gnarly stuff are on there. The guy that wrote all the Goosebumps books, which were massive when we were growing up, uh, is on there. And there's one guy who's an FBI investigator who sort of like worked out a way that you could pretend that you were listening, but you weren't quite listening in negotiation. So if it's called mirroring. So you just, when someone says something to you, you listen to them and then you just play back literally the last three or four words of, of what they've just said. So we're going to try that out. Steph, how are you? I am great. Um, the, the author of Goosebumps is actually R.L. Stein. And if you're not really R. L. paying attention. Stein. Yes. <laughs> um, so I was listening to that one. Um, but, yeah, the problem with the mirroring is that if you get asked uh, something specific, you don't really have any idea uh, what they spoke about. So Yeah, you'd, you'd have no idea what they spoke about. And I've enjoyed mirroring you, Steph Beck. All right, let's get into the presidential speeches. Uh, we've got a video to introduce us. Hello from the chat line. Perul saying, keen for the youngsters, the leaders of today, to take us into new worlds. Angus Gallagher saying, hey, bring on the youngsters. ON1X saying, hello. Holly Johnson saying, go, Steph. Lunatune saying, what dimension is Steph Beck currently in or going to? I added that last bit. Let's get into the video and get into the presidential speeches of imagination. <laughs> I want to get our homeless people off the street. I want to see 
a future where education is free. Today, we ask you to imagine what's possible. For our first presidential speech of imagination today, we have Connor Sarr. And Connor, how are you feeling? Good, hi, Jack. Feeling fantastic. Thanks. Hey, I love this backdrop. Is that a pink world that you've drawn with a little like AIM hot air balloon? Yeah, it sure is. It's fantastic. I really love pink worlds. I'm very excited about them. Hey, mate, take us away. I'm very excited to hear from you and, and, and hear your speech. So, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the official president of imagination for the next three minutes, Connor Sarr. To the people of the Imagination Nation, it is with great honour that I, Connor Siren, have the opportunity to lead you as the President of Imagination. Today, I would like to share an important message about the meaning and true value of this week's theme, listening. When you hear the word listening, do you think of the classroom, maybe a teacher? When you hear listening, if you feel like it is a negative thing, you might have the wrong idea. Let's say you're delivering a speech as part of an awesome program. Your audience isn't shuffling about sharing conversation between one another, fidgeting or daydreaming, they're giving you their full attention. They're sitting comfortably still, giving you their eyes and ears. They're simply listening. Listening isn't only just an act of politeness. It is a sign of respect, maturity and empathy. When you are listening to someone, you're showing them that you respect them for being open to share their ideas and thoughts with you. It's making them feel welcome, appreciated and understood. In our, in our nation, imagination is what drives, creates, and inspires the course of our future. With a nation, with an imagination as powerful as ours, there is nothing we cannot achieve. Your imagination is the very thing that has brought you here today. But what if you didn't imagine what the president was up to today? What if you didn't come along to listen? What if we didn't imagine at all? Your imagination is important, not just to yourself, but the people around you. Your imagination is what connects us with who you are. If none of us bothered to imagine, we would fall out of touch with the rest of the world. So that's why I want you, as a proud member of the Imagination Nation, to keep on imagining. With isolation taking its toll on our social lives, I want you to use not only this week as an opportunity, but beyond, to listen to how those around you are feeling. Don't hesitate to contact your friends and family online or via social media. It's been a tough challenge being without a lot of company that we would usually have at school and catching up in the holidays. So lending a pair of ears to someone can be the perfect antidote to self-isolation. Now, unfortunately, I can't be the president of the Imagination Nation forever, so I'm looking forward to, the, to listening to the speeches of the next Imagination presidents. But before I go, I want to remind you that you have the power to imagine, one of the greatest powers of all. Use it to become a leader, a mentor, Use it to create, use it to inspire, use it to share ideas, to imagine your path, use it to get onto AIM TV. And most importantly, of course, use it to listen. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> Connor, I love that Mary just jumping as a co-host. Perfect. Bros, that was unreal. Yeah, just hearing, I love, I love that idea that, uh, that imagination is this gift that we've got. There's a guy called um, Albert Ein something. Do you know that last name? Uh, I think it might be uh, Einstein. That's the one. Yeah, he's got it. <laughs> he's got it. So he, he said imagination is more important than knowledge. And I reckon after like 16 years of, do of doing the work with AIM and working with kids all around the world now, I feel like if you can keep that alive, you can you can create any idea and find your way into any place. And I just thought you you put that really perfectly. And I also love how you just said, you know, oh, there's a bummer. I can't be the president of imagination forever. <laughs> I reckon you can, you know, I think it's a, uh, if we, if we take on that custodianship of the idea of imagination, not as something that is, only allowed when you're a little kid. Like my daughter's two years old at the moment and her imagination is so on fire. Like it's unbelievable. She can go anywhere. And when we then go to become adults, we think we've got to let that go. So I'd be challenging you as you've challenged us all to, to continue to be a president of imagination in your life and, and see what happens if you keep, keep finding ways to go, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Because there's always a solution to a problem if we're willing to try and imagine new realities. So thanks for joining us today and being the president of imagination for three minutes and for the rest of your life. Thank you.
Good on you. All right, for our next presidential speech, um, we're going to go to Elizabeth Pringle. Before we go there, we're just going to read a couple of comments from the chat line. So we've got Jess Daniels saying, great energy, Connor. Jess, I'm glad I didn't add an S to your name. Sometimes I do that. I'm sorry for that sometimes. Grace saying, Connor, what a setup. Chloe Bishop saying, incredible, Connor. Perul saying, I'm voting for Connor, Connor, Connor as the president. Great podium plus artwork and what powerful words. Bobby Cunningham, Connor speaking so confidently. Tom Winsley, such good advice, Connor. Okay, we're now going to go to Elizabeth Pringle, who's joining us as a president of Imagination. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Pringle, or as some may know me as Libby. I'm 15 in Year 10 at Oak Flats High School. I'm a proud Wiradjuri woman and my totem is Guano. I view the world as, like many others probably do, where it's a massive playground where either you get along or you don't. Maybe it's where you haven't met each other, but they still have a huge impact on your life. Currently, our world is going through a pretty dramatic change where first it was burning down to floods where it needed it the most, to currently a massive pandemic that is affecting the whole world, killing over 61 people in Australia. I have been in isolation for about five to six weeks now um, and adjusting to online schooling and like learning a whole different way has been pretty difficult. Um, yeah, so I'm going to live in a world where we have the ability to share our feelings, where we can all stand tall together and by this all we have to do is listen, listen to each other and communicate. To make this change, we just need to simply allow ourselves to treat others with kindness, love and respect. I want to change the world by starting small, like smiling when making eye contact or opening a door for someone and listening to everyone's opinions. Many small things will lead to a massive change where everyone can feel like they belong. Young people of today are the people of the future. They'll be the ones that make the change. I will be the one that makes the change. Steph, isn't that idea of starting small one of the things which is a key to creating change? I think we can often get really scared about the, the bigness of how do you change something and that idea that a, a small thing is a smile to someone can then send some energy along that that person then maybe smiles to someone else who maybe smiles to someone else who's maybe a heart surgeon who then suddenly on that day performs even better than they would have because they've been filled up with some joy. How do you go about wanting to see big change really quickly and then you know, taking one foot after the other forward and, and taking those steps? Is that me, Steph, Jack, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you. Go. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a really powerful idea, the, the ripple effect of um, kindness. And um, for me, what keeps me driven is just knowing, um, just wanting to live in a world that is um, a little kinder as well. But I know that everything that I do does have an impact. So keeping that um, in mind as well. You know, you can't see um, the, the, the development um fast like you know that well, I know that there's um, at least some um, benefits to, to what I'm doing so that's keeps me driven. Yeah I think we th this morning we had John joining us and, and talking about uh, just grabbing the quote yeah talking about the needing data to prove the impact of change when it comes to economics sometimes I don't know if you can prove the data of a smile or, or a piece of kindness for someone but my gosh the ripple effect can be so significant Kalisha Rhodes, thank you for joining us to be the president of Imagination. How are you feeling? I think we've just got you on mute, so we'll have one more go at that. We'll do an unmute. Just pretend that never happened. Scene, change, okay. Yeah, exactly, and John Daly said this stuff earlier today. Kalisha Rhodes, how are you feeling about being the president of Imagination? Hey Jack, I'm feeling pretty nervous, but um, nonetheless, I'm excited. <laughs> and how, how have you found transitioning from you know being in high school yourself to then at a reasonably early age taking on the role of a mentor and working 
you know, in the North Coast, what did you have to do in your mind to, to go, okay, maybe I can, I can see things change and I can be a part of leading it? Yeah, so I guess, um, I guess my mindset comes from high school. I was a pretty um, quiet girl in high school and so I saw a lot of the time um, the, uh, the Aboriginal students didn't really get much of a say in things and I wanted to change that um, and I wanted to be part of making a change um, in my community. So, yeah, I guess when I finished high school in my mind, it was just like, I want to make a change and I'm, this is how I'm going to do it and I just kept taking on all of the opportunities that come my way and yeah, now it's led me to AIM, making a really good change in my community with all the answers. So I'm loving it. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today to, to take on the challenge as the president of Imagination. So ladies and gentlemen, introducing Kalisha Rhodes, our president of Imagination. Kingiwala Nyegala Kalisha. Nyegala Wijibu Waibu Dube. Gala Noi Bunjalang Jagan. Hello, my name is Kalisha. I am a Wijibu Waibu woman and this is Bunjalang Country. When I think of the word brave, I think of my nephew who just done a backflip into the pool or I think of walking into the shops on my own to get milk and bread for mum and dad. Or more recently, I think of putting water and oil into my car by myself. Something that definitely requires you to be brave. Bravery has different meanings to everyone. During unprecedented times like COVID-19, the world requires us to stop, listen, to be brave and to trust the process. Trust that these restrictions are going to be lifted. Trust that we can visit our elders, our grandparents and our friends again soon. Let's all be brave enough to believe that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, we all love kicking goals, right? Both on the footy field and off. Now is a great time to think about your goals, to maybe write them down, get them on a piece of paper out of your head and stick them somewhere where you will see it every day. As a reminder, that each day when you wake up, it's a chance to look at your goals, remember them. And remember that as the sun rises each day, it's a new day to work towards them. As the president of Imagination, I want to reassure every single Indigenous kid in Australia that even though times are tough, we're gonna to get past this. Our lives are gonna go back to some sort of normal. There'll be a chance for you to get on the footy field, to go shopping, and to be free, I guess, if that's what we want to call it. I want to reassure all of the deadly Indigenous kids in Australia that we hear you, we see you, and we believe in you. Bugle Bear, thank you. Yes, Kalisha. We've got Brad Witters saying, yeah, Kalisha. Uh, Tani Holmes saying, yes, Kalisha, be brave. And lots of love coming in from the chat line. Thank you for, for joining us and being the president of Imagination for a moment. How do you feel coming out the other side of the speech? I feel better than I did at the, I feel better than I did at the start of it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you just go for it, don't we? Go for it, put it out there, and then then keep building. And yeah, thank you for the gift of of encouraging bravery. And I know that for a lot of us, it's um sometimes you just need a pleasant reminder from someone to go keep going, keep setting those goals. So thanks for joining us today, Baranya. Oh, thank you. Alrighty, now we're going to go into the chaos classroom. And Steph Beck, you are going to run this full show for eight minutes. How are you feeling? Feeling excited, actually. I'm missing hanging out with the kids in the program, so it's great to be on here and um, catching up with a few of them. Awesome. Well, we we have the stage is going to be yours in a moment. We'll throw to a short video, and then we'll see in the chaos classroom. We're going to have Steph joining us. We're going to have Rose joining us. We're going to have Topsy joining us. We're going to have Creed joining us. So they're on the other side of this video with Steph Beck as your chaos classroom host for the day. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us in the Chaos Classroom today. Um, it is really good to be hanging out with some of the mentees and the first one I'm going to talk to is Steph from uh, Warrnambool. Um, she's been in the AIM program for a little while and she actually had um, organised a meeting with her principal to get AIM back in the school. Hey Steph, how are you going? Do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, I'm Steph. I'm a Wakamara woman. Um, yeah, yeah, from Warrnambool. So you know a little bit um, about AIM um, after being in the program for a while. Do you want to give us your um, your view on failure time? Um, I think failure time is an excellent thing to do, uh, especially throughout the 
um, program. Um, it just allows us to really just to um, be able to experience the fact that failure is a good thing and you can learn so much from it. And um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think embracing it as um, embracing failure is a really good, valuable tool for learning um, and the environment that we get to do it in. Um, that also helps us get like a sense of trust with each other. So that's um, really nice. Um, as you can see, I'm in an imagination factory uh, right now. And I think one of the most important things that we do inside these rooms is failure time. So we're going to jump into that with Chaos Classroom today and you're the first one, um, first cab off the rank. Um, we're gonna do um, an activity with you and you've got two minutes to find um, this one I call show and tell with a twist. Uh, you've got two minutes to find an object in your house and we'll swing back to you. Um, you can tell us a story about that object. It can either be true or false. And as great listeners, it's up to us to decide which one is the true story. All right, we'll swing back to you in a couple of minutes. Go find your object. Hi Topsy, how are you? Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, I'm Topsy Van Lords and I'm from the Warrnambool region as well. Warrnambool is representing today. Creed, how are you? Welcome to the show. Want to introduce yourself to the people uh, joining our live stream? Have we got you there, Creed? Maybe not. Rose will get you to swing into the game as well. Um, how are you today? Do you want to say hello to the, the crew that's watching and introduce yourself? Um, hello, guys. I'm Rose and I'm from Miranda Park Secondary College. I've been um, attending M for a year now. And yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, so this game that we're going to play is called Name Three. And I have some cards here and I'm going to ask you to name three things from the categories uh, as I read them out. And I'll be your timer with my hand. So watch your screen. Um, for example, uh, name three things you can do with water. So you can drink it, you can swim in it, or you can have a water flight. Okay, you guys ready? Topsy and Rose, all good to go? Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, Topsy, uh, name three things that you can do with paper. You can draw on it, you can make paper, um, paper aeroplanes and you can write letters. Oh, scraped it in. Well done. Um, Rose, name three types of maths. Um, linear equation. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard under pressure, isn't it? Some geometry, some algebra. I'm sure there's heat more. <laughs> um, name, Topsy, name three things that you can find in a classroom. Um, a ruler, a pencil, and desks. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rose, name three types of birds. A hummingbird, a flamingo, a uh, owl. An owl, well done. <laughs> um, Topsy, name three uh, facts about your eyes. Um, they can see, they come in different colours, and... Uh, You've got a iris. Yes, well done. <laughs> I might have give you an extra second on the end of that one. Um, Rose, name three sports that you can do in the water. Swim me. Um, basketball, volleyball. Water yeah. basketball. Yep, I'd love yeah. to play that one yeah. as soon as this is over. <laughs> um, and last one, uh, Topsy, name three of the oceans on Earth. Um, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean and Atlantic Ocean. Clever, I tell you. <laughs> well done. Um, so thanks for playing, guys. That was fun. But um, surprise, surprise, there's also some learning um, development that takes place when you play really fast paced games. Um, it increases your brain function because this is um, it stimulates the area in your brain that is responsible for complex thought and memory function. Um, it also develops your cognitive skills. So your brain uses this to, to think, to read, to learn to uh, remember, to reason, and also to pay attention. And it helps, all of that helps with problem solving. So if you keep playing those games with your friends and your family, um, you'll be well placed to navigate some of the challenges that you may face in your life. Um, Rose, I wanna come back to you now and um, just talk a little bit about, slow it down a little bit. Um, 
I just want to like uh, take a walk through your mind for a bit and see what listening uh, means to you. Uh, listening um, to me is uh, if you listen, if you listen to someone and you know them, that's the only way you can get into their head. So if you if someone's talking to you and you're not listening to them, it's not going to help. You're just thinking about something else. But if you listen to them and you get to know that person, it will make it easier for you to have connection with them and to be friends with them. Yeah, so building strong relationships. Um, yeah, you told me yesterday in our catch up a story from primary school that I thought was pretty amazing. Would you like to share that with the, the audience? Yes, sure. Um, so when I came to Australia and um, I went to primary school, I was in it like in year five because I skipped two grades. Um, for me, I didn't speak for like a year because I didn't know how to speak English. So for me to learn how to speak English, the only way I could learn was by listening to other people and not talking. So it was the experience that I had with listening. So by me listening, it helped me to get a uh, better knowledge with um, English and um, how to, you know, have communication with other people. So that was just how it was in primary school. I think that must have been one of the, or well, sounds like a really tough um, challenge to go through, not being able to speak, well, not speaking for a year while you're at school. So um, it's really good to hear that you've taken something positive out of it. And having learned that at such a young age, it's gonna, do you well in life I think having strong relationships around you so thank you for sharing your story um Steph how did you go it's time for us to practice some listening ready for this story was your object you've got to tell us something that's either true or false make the story as elaborate as you like and we'll decide um what one's the true story awesome so I will like a little unicorn snow globe I got it for my 16th birthday and it is probably my most favorite thing in my bedroom besides my bed um and whenever I'm having like a down day or whatever I just like shake it and then just watch the glitter fall out of it and it's actually like very relaxing and yeah I think it was the best present I got from my birthday <laughs> and yeah so it's pretty cool Okay, Rose and Topsy, what's the verdict? Do we think she's telling the truth? Um, yes, I think she's telling the truth because it's something really beautiful. And if that's what she um, got for her birthday and if it's what she um, uses to maybe feel like happy if she's down, I feel like it's just the truth she's telling right now. How about you, Topsy? Do you agree? I feel like she's telling the truth because the way she described it, it sounded like it means a lot to her and I don't think she would lie about something like that. Yeah, nice. Uh, what's I reckon the, she's what's lying. <laughs> I, think it's, I think she's just sort of managed to put the wool over her eyes and just tell this wonderful, heartwarming story and I think she's a very good storyteller and she's lying. So I'm going to go the other side. Well, she sold me if it is uh, um, false. Sorry, what is it, Steph? It's it's true. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, done very well. <laughs> well done. Well, thanks for um, playing along with that activity on improvising and some of the proven benefits that um, are true for both young people and adults. Uh, when you do um, improvising, it improves your communication. Um, it helps with your decision making, improves your teamwork, builds your confidence, helps with anxiety, funny that, which is amazing, um, and also promotes active listening skills, which is what we're all about today. Um, so to wrap up our classroom, we're going to um, throw to uh, the, the youngsters who have prepared um, a message for the world. So Rose, Steph, Corey, um, and Myra, if you guys have uh, anything to say. Um, we've got 10 seconds to throw out a message. Okay, okay I'll go first. Um, remember that Corona is not going to last forever and take this time to think about the things you took for granted and change that once Corona stops and isolation stops. Yeah, really nice being able to appreciate um, what we had before is a good message. 
Uh, Steph, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, yeah, just that we're not alone in this, like as much as isolating is. Um, and take this time to like learn something new, like an instrument or something cool to do. So, yeah. Yep, always learning is great. Um, Corey, have you got a message for the people in the world? Connor, well, let's throw that to you. Have you got a have you got a, a message that you want to throw out there beyond this speech? Yes, please. So, although I've got this written down on paper, I do truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. Um, always work towards your passion. Uh, don't just use school to get good grades, but use it to find your path beginning in life. Thanks, Cos. Connor, thank you. And there's a prime example of not um, fully paying attention. My notes said Corey. Sorry, Connor. Thank you very much for that, um, Rose. Do we have a message from you? Uh, yeah. Um, this time is the time that um, many stuff are going to fall apart, nations, everyone. There's going to be racism. There's going to be discrimination. But the best thing that we can think about right now is about families and those that are in need, those homeless people that are on the street. We should be grateful for having a home to be in during this situation and just be grateful for what you have at this moment. Thank you. It's always um, great to practice gratitude and a bit of empathy in there. Uh, Topsy, um, you're next. Um, I just want to say that change is not always a bad thing. Like everything is going to eventually change and maybe this is going to have a good impact on the world and we don't know it. Yeah, definitely some silver linings could come from what's going on. So I want to thank you guys all so much for your time, your efforts and your insights today. Um, I know that we're from different generations, um, but I think it's safe to say that we have at least one thing in common, and that is that we all agree that failure time is an important part of the learning process and makes learning fun. So keep failing, keep speaking up. Um, you guys are the leaders of today and tomorrow, and um, what you say matters. Thank you. Congratulations, Steph, back for your first ever Chaos Classroom. That was brilliant. How did that feel? Felt great. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Felt really good. Definitely going to have to have you back to, to lead another one of those Chaos Classrooms. And we had some great comments coming in from, from the chat line. Uh, Rianne Miller saying, Rose goes for the absolute hardest maths in the five-second question. Uh, we've got Dorcas saying, the power of listening. What resilience, Rose. Thank you. We've got amazing advice saying from Atlanta Lloyd to all of the people coming on. Gabriella saying, go Rose and Topsy. Uh, Bobby saying, great advice from our future leaders. So congratulations everybody for, for diving into to that segment. And now we're gonna move, before we catch up with Mayor on the other side to talk about her art, we're gonna listen to a video diary entry. So every week we've got a video that comes in from a youngster about being brave in the times of COVID-19. And we have Gabby Voges who has recorded this week's video. Hi guys, I'm Gabby Voges. I'm 16 years old and in year 11 at Glenara College. Living through such uncertain times can cause anxiety and stress. Worrying about school, having to stay away from friends and family, or worrying about the virus itself and whether we'll be safe from it. Although all this may be overwhelming, there are things we can do to shift our focus and to get our minds off the coronavirus. Personally, I love music, so I spend a lot of time listening to different genres of music or I play my guitar and try to learn new songs. I also enjoy sport and exercise, so some days I'll go outside and do some skipping or I'll do some soccer training alone or with my brother. I've also started doing some arts and crafts, made a satchel bag, done some painting and some other stuff as well. You could do stencil art. This last year, it's quite easy to do. You just find the picture off the internet, print it out, cut it out, and use spray paint and put on a canvas. Quite easy to do. Well, staying in contact with friends and family is important too. So maybe three or four times a week, uh, I'll FaceTime my friends or Zoom and we'll just talk and catch up. We have plenty of time now to watch our favourite TV shows, do things we enjoy, or perhaps learn a new skill. We've started cooking and baking more, making things we haven't made before. Perhaps read a new book, write some poetry or a song even. However, trying to stay positive is the main thing and not to focus too much on the virus. Take care and be brave.
such a profound idea that Gabby shared with us there around trying to, to pivot from acknowledging that the challenges of a moment and then finding the arenas to be hopeful. I think Topsy spoke about it as well, which was change doesn't necessarily mean we have to put all of our response into panic mode and into fear because what we can see on the other side of change is creation. It's actually how we evolve and, and we create new things. And often new things can be amazing. We can come up with you know, incredible inventions. There's an Australian person who invented Wi-Fi, for example, which allows a lot of us to connect around the world in these moments. We can come up to cu with cures to major diseases. And I'm hoping there's gonna be a great invention to cure COVID-19 for us all. And we can find through chaos and seemingly um, you know, times where it feels like we're really stressed. It's actually in those moments that we get to create new things. There's a phrase that diamonds are formed under pressure because that's how you get the really, really special diamonds to come out. And we're in that moment now. And so I think being able to practice two things going, all right, I'm acknowledging this is stressful and I'm not going to let that drown me. And now I'm going to act because when you, when you get drowned by stress and fear, you can't move, you're frozen. And this is a moment, as Gabby was talking about, to learn stuff, as Steph was talking about, to learn stuff. It's such a phenomenal moment that we might not get again to be able to take a time to, to evolve, to test new things and to, to embrace that failure that Steph Beck was talking about in the Chaos Classroom. Mayra, tell me, when you create art, how scary is it the first time you put a bit of paint down on a, on a canvas or on a, on a piece of work to start? Well, when you start, you don't really have an idea of where it's going to go and all this um, ideas just come straight at you and your imagination comes into play and putting that first dot down, you kind of um, accepting that that's where it's going to go. It's just having that confidence to put the dot down um, and your ideas to flow. So it's quite hard. It's a huge idea and that having the confidence to put the dot down and that can be what we just do in our lives that we're going to make a mark we're going to put one dot down and we can be so frozen from putting that hand up in class and that can be the same as putting a dot down or taking a step forward in a certain direction or saying to someone this is a dream i have and saying it out loud or writing it down and so after you put that dot down what happens next what happens after the first dot well i guess it's just continuing um, and not once you do put that dot down to not criticize yourself in doing it and make sure that whilst doing art and whilst relating that back to life once the artwork is done then is when you can criticize it because if it's not done it's not a full piece and you can't really say how good or bad it is because at, in the, at the end of the day like a bad piece of art is still art rather than no art. How do you know when it's finished? I've been painting for the last um, year or two and I just, you know, this painting's got like 20 layers or something on it. I can't stop putting paint on a canvas. How do you stop? How do you know when to just go, all right, that's that moment? See, when I go into an artwork, it's usually I have this idea and it's got a whole bunch of meaning about it and I don't ever do art when I don't like have meaning behind it because that that's when the art turns into something you don't want so well I guess with this art um that I did um I guess can you bring it closer to the screen fun. while you're explaining it for us bring it yeah. bring up the screen and, and and talk us through it okay I'll talk you through this art so I had a teacher at my school um Unfortunately, she, she didn't have a position at our school anymore, but she was highly involved with the Indigenous kids of my school. Um, and she represents the, the two platypus making her way in the world as she's lost her job and she's finding that new job. And the dots, the circle dots on the outside represent the mess of her world and the day-to-day -day life struggles and the platypus making their way, trying to find where to hunt, where to feed, um, where to live and where to set up tent. Um, 
and that's her way of like finding a new job like where is her life gonna start and she's a platypus finding her way and finding her home um that's a beautiful beautiful story and did you teach her did you ever share that artwork with with that teacher and did they know that you made it for them um so I told her I was making it um at the very end of last year for her and I finished it just before we got the rules with isolation so I I can't give it to her at the moment because she's up in Sydney and traveling but I plan to give it to her as soon as I can well, you should send a send her the link of you talking about her and, and the story on imagination tv and I'm, yeah, I'll do that I'll for sure smile on her face for sure Hey, thank you for, for creating and we're in the process of coming up with a, a, a bit of a program around offering artists in residencies to, to young artists like yourself. So we'll try and see if we can bring something together and maybe create something, um, whether it's a shirt or a hoodie or a story that's important and that can move people. And I think one of the fascinating things which I love about art, uh, particular clothing, when you, can, when you can make it have power and agency, you can create trends you can create actions and you can create those trends for good you know nike sort of sold us a promise of, of a physical advancement and often it was a celebrity build for us to behave in a certain way and you buy the shoes and you get the shoes and you might go for a little bit of a run but very often it's become like a popular trend i'd love to see a generation of celebrities who are mentors who are thinkers who are complex just like the group of you who have come on today so yeah let's see if we can maybe create some magic together outside of the show and um yeah and tell some stories and inspire some people yeah well my main idea with art is to show when people look at my art that they see their own meaning so this art has its specific meaning and for that teacher but when I want what I want is for other people to look at it and see like their own version of the art as I've left interpretation for them to see and reflect on what they're feeling what their emotions are like and I just want to get my art out there so I can have people do that and yeah. travel and just get myself out there for that awesome well all you can ever do from the artist perspective is what you're doing now which is commit to put energy and life into that piece of creation so once you've done it you've put yourself into it and then when a person picks it up they will feel or think or see whatever their lens brings to it. But the one thing they will know absolutely and definitely is if it's alive. And if you put energy and life into it and, and blood, sweat and tears, they will feel that it's alive. So keep doing that as you keep creating. And yeah, my personal interpretation of that, my, our totem is the Jambin, which is a platypus uh, from, from the Bunjong Nation. So it's cool to say that. I was like, that might be my ancestors talking to me through this show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, being a part of Imagination TV. It's been great rocking it with you. Tomorrow we're getting together with the, with the designers and we're pumped about the update to the show next week. We're going to have 10 kids live in the studio audience for every episode. We're going to have a partner school officially partner with each episode. We'll have principals taking on a 60-second challenge. We'll have university vice chancellors and leaders taking on a 60-second challenge. We'll have 180 seconds of wizardry with wizards coming onto the show and we'll keep doing our best to bring a mentor into every kid kids home every single day as we work through COVID and then beyond. Thanks for everyone for supporting Imagination TV. Head to aimmentoring.com if you want to grab one of these, this hoodie pays rent hoodie or an Imagination hoodie and keep supporting us. And thanks to our youngsters and our co-host Steph Beck for joining us today. And that's a wrap. We'll see you all soon. See you later.